What is up everybody, Gary Simon here. Now, if you've ever tried to style or customize a select menu, for instance, in HTML and CSS, it is very difficult. So today I'm going to show you something called the select menu, and that is a new way, and basically it's going to eventually replace. This is something you cannot yet use in production, uh, but we can enable it uh, in Chrome so that we can start using it now and start experimenting with it. So this, I. Uh, is what we're going to be doing right here today. So notice um, how this is really something that's customized outside of your typical select menu. Um, look at this one over here. We have this nice shoe icon. Doing this with the new select menu is actually really easy. And so that's exactly what I'm gonna show you. Today's uh, video is really inspired by this particular tutorial or this article by CSS Tricks. Uh, so you definitely check that out. It goes into a lot of depth. And this all comes from the Open UI. And they are basically um, a bunch of developers who um, are outside of just the select menu. There's a lot of other elements that they're basically advocating and trying to introduce into actual browser technology. And so I'm gonna show you exactly how this works. And we'll go ahead and just kind of scratch the surface here. There's a lot more you can do with this element and other elements. Uh, but as always, make sure to subscribe and let's get started. Now, chances are, if you're watching this video, you probably want to be a better designer. And if that's the case, how much do you really want it? Because at designcourse.com, I've created a UI UX course that will help you go from designing layouts that I might rate a four or five up to eight and beyond. But more important than that, as a better designer, this means that you can land higher paying clients and jobs. This course includes over 16 hours of video, 40 interactive UI design tests, and even mentorship, where I personally take a look at your work that you submit, I review it, and many times I also revise it, providing you with great feedback to help you become a better designer. Now, for this video, I want you to use the coupon code UI2022 and that will give you 22% off at checkout. All right, so the first thing we're gonna take a look at is the project setup here. Um, basically, I have just a folder with an index.html right here. You can hit exclamation point enter here in Visual Studio Code to get almost to where we're at right here. I did add the link here to the CSS. Um, that's in a CSS folder and we have a main.sass file. You'll need the live SAS compiler extension over here as well as the live server extension in which we can uh, right click the index.html click open with live server. All right, so um, obviously at this point, we just have an exclamation point because I forgot to delete that. All right, so now it's blank and let's get started here. We're gonna do uh, just two, def two s simple demos here of the select menu. Um, the first one's gonna be a simple one. Um, and so what we're gonna do is just have an overall wrapper that's gonna wrap both of these uh, select menus together. And then let's do our very first select menu. So select menu is the HTML attribute name. And then we're gonna put class equals simple. All right, so this is gonna be our simple demo. And then it looks exactly like any other drop down menu. So we're just gonna have an option and the value could be whatever you want. Uh, I'm just gonna omit that for now because this isn't serious. And then we're just gonna have, I uh, want it says testing one and then shift alt down arrow key just to replicate that line a few times. One, two, three, four. All right, now if we save this and we go ahead over to here, um, let me go ahead and just zoom up here. You'll see that it behaves pretty much like any other menu, all right? There's just some slightly different styling differences between them um, for like the native one, uh, but for the most part, that is pretty much what it looks like out of the box, essentially, all right? so. This is where we're gonna switch over to our main.sass file. And so I'm gonna give ourselves just a custom background and we're gonna create a rule set for the body property. So all we're doing is setting the margin to zero, height, 100 viewport height, background, a dark desaturated blue, a display grid, place content center, this right here, um, we're gonna use to center things up and then font family, new Nita. I already have that installed so I'm not even gonna bother importing it. So we're gonna go over here and again, nothing changes. Uh, it's still the same old uh, select box. So now let's also add uh, a rule set real quickly for a wrapper. All right, so again, not much happening here. Height, 100 viewport height, margin top, 200 pixels. And then let's get um, on here, going on to our actually, uh, our select menu. Let's go ahead and, I can't talk today. <laughs> Maybe it's too early. Select menu, 
All right, so that's the actual attribute name, uh, the HTML element name rather. Um, we're gonna say simple, just to select our simple class version of it, because we're gonna have two of them. And then we're gonna say part and button. Now, at this point, you might be wondering what exactly is this? So um, if we refer back to the documentation, and I'm gonna get this up over here, I will link this, I'll try to remember to link this in the YouTube description. Um, you could, sh it shows right here, we have uh, the actual select element, and we actually have the a button and a selected value, as well as, and now, so this is the top portion that you see before you click on it. This is the thing you have to click on, the button, in order to show what is then the list box, the opt group, which is an optional option group where you can kind of group options together, and then the option themselves. So you can essentially tie into this stuff with CSS through those uh, the pseudo selectors right there. So uh, this element right here. So you could target the styling of them if that makes sense. All right, so what we're gonna do is just put in some basic uh, styling. So 1.2 rem units for the font size, we're just gonna make it a little bit bigger for this demo. Padding, 0.5 m units. Uh, we're gonna do cursor pointer and we're gonna do border radius of 0.3 m units and margin right of 3M units, that's gonna push the other future select box out of the way, or the select, or the list menu, whatever you call the thing. So notice how, and now it is bigger. And this is what this part looks like so far. I really don't like the styling of this. Uh, it seems like they're too close together. So we can style those as well, and this is where it really becomes handy, because traditionally, tra traditionally with a normal menu, you can style this button portion up here, but this part becomes a lot more, uh, basically, difficult. So. Now what we're gonna do is put in select menu dot simple, and of course we could use our SAS, which we will a little, uh, a little bit more intelligently um, in a second for the second one, but we'll put list box here. All right, so if we refer back to the documentation, it'll show you list box is the overall container right here that wraps, uh, it's the wrapper that contains the options in the option uh, group. All right, so what we'll do is put in padding 0.5 m units. So we're gonna add, increase the padding all around. And then also we'll set a margin top at 0.5 m units, right and bottom zero, and then left at two m units. And that allows us to basically slightly reposition uh, this element right here. Now, what about the actual options? So for the options, we could just tie into the option element right here and we can add padding all around those. So we can say option, uh, we'll say padding 0.5 M units. We'll come back, look at that. Now it looks really nice. And then uh, we can also maybe just add a quick hover state. All right, so the background is just gonna be a very light blue, same hue that's the background, but we're just adding lightness to it essentially. So we'll come back. And there we go. So if I, I zoom up here just a bit, there we go. And as, of course it works exactly as you would expect. All right, so that's the very simple way to kind of, you know, just really quickly create, let me get out of here, what is happening? There we go, I, a, a styled um, list box that I, looks very good, um, select menu rather. So let's do a second one here, all right? So for this one, we're going to specify a select menu. Class is going to be custom. All right. And what's really cool is you probably saw it and weren't sure what that meant. This right here, slots, show slots. So if we click on slots, it adds all this stuff right here. And essentially there are uh, three basic slots that you can customize. And if you know anything about slots, uh, it's in HTML and it essentially allows you, if you ever work with components or web components, allows you to customize them. So if you wanna customize the, the main button, uh, you know, the portion that you have to click on to reveal the options, you can do that with a slot essentially. Um, so there's a button container slot. We could also see that there is a selected value slot and there's also a list box container slot and a slot itself under list box. So I'll show you how to deal with one of these to do something really cool. All right, so 
what we'll have here is a div class. So you just use a normal div element. And I'm gonna say uh, B btn container. And then also we'll have slot equals button. So that's the name that we get from that documentation. So we're creating a slot to customize the button portion, uh, the very beginning portion of it. And then we're also gonna say behavior attribute equals button as well. And that basically means I, you know, essentially wherever you have to be able to click in order to expand the list options. Um, and so whatever attribute you place this on, th that area will become the clickable area that, you know, it's the call to action essentially that, that will make it actually drop down and, and reveal the options. Um, and you could, you could place this on other elements. It doesn't have to be here, but it does, it makes sense to place it on this element in my opinion. All right, so next up, um, we're gonna have, let's say for instance, we wanna let people choose shoes. Let me get this out of here. There we go. <laughs> if, and, and essentially, uh, we'll say we wanna have a shoe icon. Now I've already gone over here and done this in Figma. All right, so we're gonna have two elements, like a custom little dropdown. You could design this however you want, and then we have a shoe icon. So let's right click, I'm gonna right click here and copy as SVG. And right here, I'm just gonna paste it, all right? All right, and then outside of that, we're gonna have a span with a class. We'll just call this label. Why does it keep doing that? That is very frustrating. And then also inside of here, we're gonna have another attribute that's very specific to this it is behavior equals selected value. And that means because we're creating our own custom button via slot, we have to add this attribute so that when somebody clicks on an actual uh, option, it's gonna show it in this particular element right here, if that makes sense. All right, outside of that, we're going to have another out attribute slot equals selected value. All right, sorry that you probably hear something in the background that is my mister that's misting my reptile enclosure. Uh, and then outside of that, we're gonna have um, an actual uh, button here. So let me get rid of this. There we go. Now let's have a button. All right, and so for our button, it's gonna be that little drop down menu. All right, so we're gonna get this uh, drop down icon rather. Right click, copy as SVG, paste that in. All right, now we actually have to have our options. So uh, outside of all that, we we'll have an option here. Maybe this one will be um, Nike. Let's get rid of this value here for a second. Uh, we'll have um, Adidas and whatever shoe. I can't think of any more than that off the top of my head. I'm very simple. All right, so next up, let's see how this works. All right, right now it is quite broken. Um, and so it's gonna be up to us to use CSS to fix this uh, because it is quite ugly right now. All right. So let's go ahead over here to our main.sass and we'll go ahead and create a rule set for our overall BTN container class, which we just created. Um, that is just gonna be display flex to put things from stacked to columns with gap of a, of a 0.5 M units. Now, this probably won't change too much. And no, it does not. And I wanna make sure the markup is correct here real quickly. And no, it's not. I was, I was thinking something was a little bit off here when I was looking at this. Uh, we have to take this, this div, this overall slot right here, and we have to put it right there, that closing div element. Um, otherwise, it was not gonna work here. So let's tab that in. I was thinking something looked quite wrong. All right, so now it's really hard to see, but they're right there, those three elements. And obviously we have some styling to do. So let's get back to that. And for our SAS, we're gonna keep on going here. So we're gonna choose our select menu custom. So that's our second one. 
Uh, we're just gonna change some basic things, color white. We're gonna put, take the margin top. Uh, actually, we're not gonna leave that. We're gonna leave that there. Uh, we're gonna put bar, a border. We're gonna style this one a little bit differently from the other one. RGB is gonna be 51, 49, and 61. And then also we will put in a padding of 0.5 M units, border radius 0.3 M units, font size 1.3 rem units, and cursor pointer. Now this should start making it look a bit better. All right, it, this right here, because we added that in a button element, it has this ugly gray, which we'll change that here in a bit. All right, it's starting to come along. All right, so we could also say and button. And inside of here, we'll say background none. We'll do border, none as well, and, and cursor. We have to add cursor pointer here as well. So we're gonna save that, and there we go. Now it's looking a lot better. Awesome, awesome stuff. So now, if we wanna change some other things, uh, we can so easily do it just like you would any other element, uh, which isn't typical of your standard uh, select menu. So we'll just do a hover here, Maybe we'll change the background to RGB 36 and it's just gonna slightly lighten it up based on the current background color. Like that. And there we go. So as you can see, uh, we very easily, very quickly with this new uh, select menu, I uh, have been able to create and customize way easier these drop down menus. All right, everybody, hopefully you enjoyed that. If you did, make sure to subscribe, leave a like and a comment. Also check out designcourse.com. If you're interested in learning UI UX or CSS, check the description below. All right, goodbye. Yay.